Starting a business can be one of the most exciting journeys of your life, uh, one filled with the ups and downs, and also a lot of stress. And personally, uh, very rewarding uh, to, to be your own business owner. A lot of people in Australia want to, to have that lifestyle, uh, and you should go for it. We definitely recommend it. Uh, there's a lot to be aware of, so what we're gonna cover is a quick summary of what we think you should be aware of when you're starting a business in Australia. So the first thing we wanna talk about is the business structure. So this question comes up, it's probably the first question that everyone always asks. Uh, so you should be a sole trader. Uh, there are other options such as a company, trust, partnership. Typically, once your business uh, is, is, is proven, you know, is, is uh, viable, um, we recommend uh, restructuring to a trust with a company trustee. So the reason why we say that is because the company trustee is limited liability and then the trust has the ability of streaming the profit at will. So there are many other different ways that you can structure it that have some advantages. So there's no blanket solution to this. Uh, having a trust or a company in there is the best structure. Uh, some situations you can have the company as the trading entity and the trust owning the shares. So it looks a little different, but it can still achieve the same result. Some situations it can be more advantageous, but honestly, it's a very personal circumstance situation. Um, the main reason why we say start as a sole trade and don't immediately jump to a company or something like that is because a lot of people start a business and it fails right away. It doesn't, nothing happens uh, and it just costs you a lot of money. Um, so we don't recommend this uh, and even the ATO don't recommend it because they have a small business restructure that allows you to move your business, sell your business to a company of trust, uh, tax effect free. So they know that it's appropriate to do this and we fully recommend it. Uh, there's conditions that you're gonna meet within the restructure, but honestly, most people will meet that anyway. Um, you know, if you're moving it because, uh, you know, risk and, uh, you, know, you know, your complexity of your business has changed, the NTO allow you basically one chance to do that, uh, tax-free, so we definitely recommend that. So the next thing we wanna talk about is registering your business. So, the first thing we ask uh, in, this, in this question is whether you're actually running a hobby or it's an actual business. So uh, we've covered that in another video, but basically uh, if you are a business, uh, you'll need to register for a, a, an ABN. Uh, you also need to consider whether you need to register for GST. So some sit situations it's worth voluntarily registering for GST. Um, the question is why? Well. Uh, you might be selling something that's GST free, but then your expenses have GST, you know, you're paying for fuel, travel, subscriptions, and they're all charging you GST and you get all that money back. Uh, or you maybe you're a you know, farming operation, you know what I mean? It's uh, GST free or medical services, uh, those are GST free, uh, but then you're, being, uh, you're purchasing things that are, have GST on them. So if you've made those decisions, the next question is how to register. So simply go to the Australian Business Register uh, website. It's a government website. Don't, don't be tricked into paying some third party 50 bucks to do your application. Uh, you know, you just simply just do it yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I put a link in, in the uh, description below on, uh, for our article that sort of steps through how to do that. But um, basically you can complete the ABN and GST registration at the same time. There is no fee. It's very straightforward. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is when you're starting to scale your business, what do you do? So basically, you will look to grow your team. So subcontractors, employees are the next question, how to do that. Um, so typically with subcontractors, you know, they're going to give you an invoice, you pay them. Uh, usually there's no superannuation liable because they're not an employee. But in some situations, you should be aware that if you're paying them on a daily or hourly rate, uh, and they're not a company, as in they're just employed, or they're contracting directly, you will be liable for super. Even though there's an invoice, ATO doesn't deem, doesn't see it that way. Uh, so don't do it that way, <laughs> otherwise you will have to pay them super, because effectively from their point of view, you this arrangement is an employee employer relationship. So try to avoid that or have them contract from a company. The 
when you decide, when you have, you know, you're, you're a bit more uh, stable, more consistency in your business, you want to employ staff, employees. So in that situation, you've got to be aware of work cover. So paying an annual fee, tell it, um, it's insurance for your staff. Um, it's a state-based um, a requirement. So it depends on different uh, state, uh, how much wages and, and what your uh, um, what your governing body is. Um, you'll need accounting software to be able to process the pay runs uh, and lodge them with the ATO. It's called Single Touch Payroll. You'll need to provide pay slips in accordance with Fair Work. So that's all done in the accounting software. Uh, you also need to pay super guarantee. So that also can be done in the accounting software. So it's a big jump to uh, from zero staff to one staff. So when you make that decision, you sort of keep trending upwards. But start with subcontractors and just be careful if they're, uh, if they're contracting in their personal name. And if it is, you should either pay per job or per task or project rather than per hour or per, per, um, uh, per day or something like that. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, how do you monitor, monitor your business growing? Um, so simply having an accounting system is going to be able to generate that information for you. So uh, bookkeeping is basically the process of allocating and classifying your transactions in your business. So typically from your bank statement, they're going to go through and go income, expense, blah, 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 right? Uh, the accounting system is then going to generate uh, many reports that you can then look at to tell you how your business is going. So you've got balance sheet is going to list out how many assets you have, uh, who you owe money to. The profit and loss is going to tell you how much money you made and where you spent the money. Uh, so looking at it in isolation, you may not know whether you're doing well or not. Surely a profit means good, but maybe not. It's a good idea to speak to an accountant or business accountant about how to read it, if it makes sense, comparing it to prior years, other businesses in your industry. Uh, comparing it is the only way to tell whether you are doing well or not, uh, whether it is even the business itself or other businesses. So the next thing, and the last thing I actually want to talk about is meeting your tax obligations as a new business. So typically the first question is going to be, what can I claim as a tax deduction? So there is no standard list, but there is two rules that you need to follow, two general principles. The first is that the income, sorry, the expense needs to re relate directly to the income. Perfect example is if you're paid to dig holes, a shovel is directly related to earning that income. So it's deductible. Pretty obvious, and it's the same rule applied to uh, employees or people that are employed. The second rule is it, uh, if the expense relates in general to the business. So that is extremely wide. So there's a lot of things that, you know, property expenses, uh, more trips in the car, travel expenses that were no longer, were not, wouldn't have thought to be deductible are now deductible, or at least partial deductible. So uh, it's best to just provide everything to your accountant and then uh, have the discussion of how you use that for the business. Uh, because there's, you know, everybody's different. You know, if you're a YouTuber uh, and, you know, you're doing research on something, you know, that research is uh, related to the business. So therefore, you know, pretty much everything related to it is deductible, but you've got a portion for the private use. Um, so the next question I want to talk about is um, how do you report your income and expenses? So for an income tax point of view, it's the basis that correctly reflects your income. So that's not an easy answer. So uh, typically as a sole trader starting out, you're going to be a cash basis, which means you need to report the income and expenses when you pay and receive them. So if you've got an invoice, if you haven't paid them by 30 June or someone hasn't paid you by 30 June, it doesn't go in the tax return. So the next question is when you prepare the BAS or once you've registered, um, usually we always recommend cash basis. So that's going to be once, once again, when you pay and receive the money and expenses, you include those in your BAS statement. Very easy to prepare. Once you've got an accounting system, you can just generate the GST report. It just goes in the, the BAS statement. So very easy and straightforward. So due dates, typically the income tax return is going to be due once a year. You're going to lodge that typically in October if you're doing it yourself. If you're doing it with the tax agent, they've got till 15th of May of the following year. Uh, when you do the BAS statement or the GST return, uh, depending on how you've uh, registered, you can either do it annually, quarterly, or monthly. Most clients will either be on quarterly uh, or annually. Uh, we don't recommend monthly for almost anyone unless you're an importer. 
uh, and you've got the concession with the um, the border uh, to get the um, to not be charged GST on the duties. But otherwise, uh, you usually just prepare at the same time you do the tax turn, or you do it quarterly. So this is just this video is just a sort of a brief summary of things we think small business or someone that's starting a small business need to be aware of. If you're uh, if you're not sure or uh, you're looking for some advice, uh, you know, click on the link to our full uh, guide. I think it's sort of uh, very extensive and should be able to provide the answer. But if not, you know, you can always reach out to our firm and book a consultation online it's, uh, anytime. It's very uh, straightforward process, and yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you at the next video.